reading through the Bible in a year. October 18th, 1 Kings chapter 21, 1 Thessalonians 4, Daniel 3, and Psalm number 107. Now, Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel, beside the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And after this, Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house, and I will give you a better vineyard for it. Or, if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, Yahweh forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. And Ahab went to his house vexed and sullen through a tantrum because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him. For he had said, I will not give you the, the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned his face away and would eat no food. Again, he's throwing a tantrum. But Jezebel, his wife, came and said to him, Why is your spirit so vexed that you eat no food? And he said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and have said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letters to the elders and to the leaders who lived in Nabo, or lived with Naboth in his city. And she wrote in the letters, Proclaim a fast, and sent Naboth at the head of the people, and sent two worthless men opposite him, and let them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. And the men of his city, the elders and the leaders who lived in the, his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them, as it, is, or as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth at the head of the table, or sorry, head of the people. And two worthless men came in and sat opposite him. And the worthless men brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside and stoned him to death with stones. Then they went to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned. He is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is dead. Rather, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab arose to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. Then, uh, the word of Yahweh came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. And you shall say to him, Thus says Yahweh, Have you killed and also taken possession? And you shall say to him, Thus says Yahweh, In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick up your own blood. Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me, O my enemy? He answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of Yahweh. Behold, I will bring disaster upon you. I will utterly burn you up. I will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free, in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of, uh, of Ahijah, for the anger which you have provoked me, because you have made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel, Yahweh also said, The dog shall eat Jezebel within the walls of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dog shall eat. And anyone of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the heaven shall eat. There was none who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of Yahweh like Ahab, whom Jezebel, his wife, incited. He acted very abominably in going after idols, as the Amorites had done whom Yahweh had cast out before the people of Israel. When Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothing and put on sackcloth on his flesh, and fasted and lay in sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. And the word of Yahweh came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days, but in his son's days I will bring the disaster upon his house. That's all the notes to hear. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Paul continues. 
Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so and sorry, do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, and not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more, and to aspire to live quietly, and to mind your own affairs, and to work with your, own, with your hands as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep in that Christian euphemism for death, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from, uh, from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are uh, left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. That is all the notes to hear. Now, Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image, a statue, of gold, whose height was 60 cubits, 90 feet, and its breadth, 6 cubits, nine feet. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar gather, or sent to gather the satraps, the prefects and governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the province to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the uh, officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image uh, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, uh, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every other kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be immediately cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, ty uh, lyre, trigon, horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, ah, that was one I missed, a bagpipe and every kind of music, all the people, Nations and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O, o king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, um, a bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, now, now if, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? As an aside, how many Christians today would say, Oh, I, I absolutely would have done that in those days. But when it comes time to defend their faith, when they have friends who are, who are atheists or maybe lapsed Christians who make jokes at Jesus' um, literally just with, with the, the, the intent of just mocking Jesus and whatever it is that they do. When they make fun of Christians that they don't agree with, how many of those people will stand up and say, I will not do that? With just the possibility of losing out, losing some face in front of their friends. How many won't do that little thing? And much more. How likely is it that they would put their own lives on the line to defend their faith in something that they could easily write off as, well, not that big of a deal. It's a cultural thing. I can do these things. I can go into that temple with the people. I'm in another country. It would be weird if I didn't go into the temple and throw some money in the thing and ring the little bell. It would be strange for me to do such a thing. I'll just go along with it and I just won't mean it when I do it. Does that honor Christ? Continuing on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, he's literally saying, look, if, if, if our God, if Yahweh chooses not to deliver us at this time, if he chooses to let us die in that, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the satraps and precepts are kind of like, yes, because they're trying to get rid of the Jews. He ordered the, the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments. And they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace was overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound. To the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did, did, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning, fiery furnace, and he declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. The, the cloaks were not harmed. There was no smell of fire that had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him, and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people 
nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Concluding today in Psalm 107. O give thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of Yahweh say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank Yahweh for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness, and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction, and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of God, and had spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank Yahweh for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he shatters doors of bronze and cuts in two bars of iron. Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they were rather, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent his word, and or he sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank Yahweh for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of Yahweh, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven and they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They railed and staggered like drunken men and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to Yahweh in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. And they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank Yahweh for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry dwell and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly. He does not let their livestock diminish. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, evil, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless ways. But he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness shuts its mouth. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let, him cons- or let them consider the steadfast love of Yahweh. That's it. That's all the reading and all of the notes for today. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.